Hey everybody, it's I, uh, your survivor buddy Gordon Holmes with the nerdiest thing you're going to do all week. I'm talking about the Survivor 46 Power Rankings. A big welcome to all of my beautiful nerds out there. Uh, first round is over. Uh, my team won one and the alternate universe re before won one and there were two ties. So today, the first round winners are squaring off in a battle of robbed goddesses. That's the term, right? That's that's oh. what they say robbed goddesses oh my, yeah oh my god um did I use it correctly? <laughs> uh introducing first the woman who bested me in the first round despite that there was a medevac and i'm going to say that until the day i die uh we're talking about survivor 44 uh, excuse me survivor 45 favorite kelly now bandy and kelly welcome thank you what an intro even though you almost confused me with brandy that's I, fine. I, uh, my, yeah, I was getting really close. I got my lucky shirt on today. Hey, okay. If if, if, if Hunter oh. can't remember logos, I can't remember numbers. Okay. Yeah, so. in case everyone forgot our logos right here. Really? I there weren't any in case you can't read new the number. Error logos because there's that big number Study right the birds. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and in my corner, uh, the leader of the Franimaniacs, Survivor 44 <laughs> Genius slash Challenge Beast, talking about Franny Marin. Welcome, Franny. Oh, yay. Happy to be back. Gotta, get Gotta support right. the team. Okay, yeah, you got me right. You so, did. You did. Yeah, good, thank you. Yeah, that was the goal. Uh, <laughs> I first and foremost, my apologies. Um, when I set this up, I wasn't sure it was going to be a merge episode, uh, and yeah. merges are the worst. No, the worst. I think. Mm, Lies. I think this is so fake. I texted Gordon earlier this week, and I said, "You're so sneaky for not putting yourself on the worst." <laughs> episode to rank you knew you know what i think you knew hey you know what coaches put in their best players in uh in, in important situations so no regrets from me fran you should take uh, this that is a as conspiracy. a compliment it's a conspiracy because gordon asked me to do next week's originally and then all of a sudden you and I were moved to this week. Wait a second! Oh, I was like, hold on. This is the wrong week, Gordon. Are you sure? So I'm You gonna gave be... us the stinker week. This is Why'd a you do that? This is a compliment. You should both take this as a huge compliment that I had faith in both of you to be able to pull this off. Because yes, ranking merges and tribe swaps are the worst. Uh, especially with mergatory half the people. Yeah, the saying, new era. It's a joke. Yeah, so... Uh, can my we apologies. get that as like a yeah? We're gonna cut that out, just that line, and send it. Close so your ears, Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Um, Kellen said that the new era is a joke. <laughs> I'm in the. You know what? I will say the mergatory from my experience was a little. Do you guys remember the divide? It was crazy. Oh, it yeah. was all the all the big dudes on one team, and it was like me, Emily, J, Maya, D, <laughs> Caleb, and J. You're so like, this good week, luck, everybody. Which team is gonna choose? Like, so this week it's gonna be like Hunter, you like, like, oh no. Yeah. Honestly, it could easily go that way. Yeah. And then, like, uh, you know, for uh, Soda is not gonna have anybody to rip an idol from if her team doesn't win. So it's a lot, lot, of, lot of potential. Like, yeah, last week was her last idol rip opportunity. And Venus held it like a baby. We were good. That's like adorable. You see Tim, ha like Tim having conversations. A part of me is like, oh, can the idol vote with him? The idol would never go to tribal. That's the that's how the math works. Oh, so uh, tiki wait, man. conspiracy theory: the tiki man can actually cast a vote. You just have to figure out how to get him how to get tribal. Him <laughs> it's a secret. Yeah. It's a secret advantage. Like, the only yeah. time, like, was Adam it one, trying was it to take one, it off the corner. Yeah, yeah. Was it one world where the, the guys had won and they're like, ah, screw it, we'll go to tribal anyway. So that would have been like the one time the media idol could have yes. cast a vote. Yeah, I actually, I will say I like all timeline for me when Tim was like talking to the Tiki man and he's like, Tiki man, when am I going to poop? <laughs> that was it was just, it was so funny. Like, we've all been there, I, Tim. We've all been there. And like, you just never think that that's going to make the cut. And this week it did. And I'm grateful for it. That is, is so funny. How many embarrassing things we all say. And then that yeah. poor Tim, he gets, he gets the, the rough end. <laughs> what is the it. thing that you both said that you were like, I really hope that doesn't make the edit. <laughs> oh, too many of those. So many. Yeah. So was it asking the Tiki sick. man to poop? I, I can like, cause that's. We had, we had a conversation about like uh, survivor crushes. Oh. And we were all very nervous that would have made the edit. And yours was. Wait a second. I'm I'll not tell you sorry. mine. I'm not Sharon. I'll tell you mine. Who is it? Who is it? Come Malcolm on, Sharon Freeber. Circle. Malcolm <laughs> Freeber. Freeber. All day long. Well, we had a, we had like a long discussion, and you know, on the Bellow Tribe, um, the only only person who liked men was Kendra, so she was <laughs> she was bringing the, the holding down the fort. Yeah. Um, so we were just discussing, you know, the greats of women Survivor players. 
as one does. No examples of no, not even a single. You know, uh, okay, here, how about this, Kelly? Share one of the crushes. You don't have to say whose it was, just one of them. Oh, well, that's not. Mm-hmm. Mm. I wish I could remember Bruce's because I remember they were kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> was it Malcolm? It was Malcolm. Michael. Yeah, yeah, no, it was Jeremy Collins. Um, no, I mean, we had, we went with some of the, you know, the classics came up, right? Parvati, Brenda, you know, that. Oh, vibe. Brenda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brenda was, I didn't, I mean, Brenda wasn't mine. I didn't think of her. And then I was like, that's a good. Brenda's a great yeah, Brenda's one. Andrea Belkey, yeah, a lot of good ones. Yeah, yeah. Belkey's a good one. Classics. We're blessed. Brandy and for Brandy. a situation where you're like, oh, I can't name my crush because he's right here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that, that, so that, didn't even, that didn't even occur to me. I definitely would have said somebody just. <laughs> <laughs> but Matt is my survivor crush. You're right, Gordon. That's very survivor smart. Crush. I you're love so it. Right. That you're was, so right. That is the correct <laughs> answer. Um, yeah. So... <laughs> Back into last week's show, Yana wins. Oh my gosh. Finally. Finally. Oh, thank you. I was genuinely happy for them. I was too. Yeah. And when they went to the slow motion shot, I was like, oh, come on. You got it. You got it. Oh, loved it. Like an old school sports so movie. It felt very yes. cute. It was really cute. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that they fell to the ground too. Like it was just, they, they were just so purely happy. And the other part that I loved about it is that like, you can see on the other tribes, they were happy for them too. Like Ben has a comment about how yeah, it's that was they so get cute. a break. And then like, so does clapping. Like, like they've just been through so, so much that it's like a, a collective sigh of relief. And I think yeah. Jeff as well was like, thank God, like a different <laughs> tribe to try. He's like, so this, sick of it. Not again. This not flint again. has been burning a hole in my pocket. No pun intended. That is how I felt looking at Lulu every time. Like when they yeah. won the reward challenge, I was so genuinely happy for them. And then I think the saddest I've ever seen Caleb to this day is when they lost the third immunity challenge. He was oh, just no. like, he was done. Like the the golden yeah. retriever light in his eyes was gone. There's nothing. Wait, Kelly, I'm curious from you because you didn't go to tribal before the merge, right? Do you yeah. like, like, I feel like if I was on Sega, and then I mean this happened to me on when my season, I was like actually excited. Like I'm like, let's rip the band-aid off, let's do it, let's just go and vote somebody oh out. Gosh. Were you like upset that you didn't go? 100 percent I mean, yeah. I think I was always I'm like a nervous person, so I liked avoiding tribal, <laughs> but I me and Caleb did have a little bit of a contemplate um if we should maybe throw a challenge. Mm. Uh we, it wasn't that serious, but I have said this so many times on podcasts now, but like I t- completely stand by that you need to go to tribal council at least yep. once pre-merge i think for sega going once is perfect because you don't want to lose yep. too many people on this like tribe that's mostly getting along but like for me like i watched maria and charlie and i'm like this feels like me and brando and, and we ended up getting swapped and everything all over the place but i would have really liked that opportunity to mm-hmm. you know draw the line in the sand as my confessional yeah. said you learn how to play the game how do you build true real trust and we didn't we didn't even find our idol so there was no like concrete things other than conversations i went to the merge with and who knows if it would have changed anything but I, I i really think that that's a critical part plus it's just yeah it's fun like i'm like sitting there and i'm doing all this work and building all these relationships and then I'm, it doesn't even matter <laughs> yeah yeah, there's, yeah. there's got to be something, you know, we, when we're at where the press is out, we run an immunity challenge against a dream team. And if we win, hooray, we get a case of beer, which don't get me wrong. It's awesome. Uh, but there's got to be just like the game can take a break when you win an immunity challenge. Right. Like, there's got to be like we can relax tonight. Like, and I'm yeah. and I, I'm someone who oh, was for sure. paranoid across the board in every situation. Uh, I couldn't imagine being in one where people are are, are, are intentionally gunning to, to, to get me out of a game. So like, there's just gotta be like a, oh, we can just relax tonight. Like we can just chill out. So I, I was very happy for Yanu. As much as, yeah. as much as if Yanu had gone to tribal, we would have been getting cupcakes. Um, like, cause- Oh. Yeah. Cause oh Julie, yeah, Julie put them as her top Yano three. As her top three. All three of them, even Kenzie. Yeah, yes, that was move. insane to me. That was insane, but and a, an excellent like call, but I was like, whoa, yeah. she's all in. And I love Julie's Julie strategy. It was so- Julie goes all in. <laughs> Julie, like, That's her, Julie. like I, I, if you would ask me to make a case for Kenzie staying, I didn't have one. And Julie's was, you know, it might, say, might make sense for Tiffany to get rid of Q so it doesn't look like, you know, because what Bono had told everybody Duo. was that they were an alliance. I'm like, mm. that makes oh perfect sense. God. Owen felt the same way. He's yeah. like, I didn't think of that either. So Julie, for someone who was very nervous about doing this, did amazing. She was nervous. Yeah. Oh my God, she's literally the best. And she, she has such best. a good mind for this without even trying. Yeah. 
So how did and we And she's feel- great at making cupcakes. Sorry. We're going to learn. <laughs> we're we're going to learn. Uh, if, if you haven't been paying attention, we have certain bets that are going on uh, this season. If, 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 if uh, uh, my Alliance wins, she really has to make us cupcakes. Um, if uh, the Reba new era Reba wins, uh, I have to buy them sandwiches. It's probably going to be gift cards. I'm not sending. Uh, can we give it up on the sandwiches? You know, well, it's, 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 Austin's, <laughs> yeah. it's Austin's thing with the sandwiches. Uh, and then if, if my Alliance loses and it's Franny's fault, uh, we all get to be at her wedding. So that's... Oh, yeah. I don't want to lose, but if we're going to lose, I hope... You hope that, it, you hope that I'm, I'm the problem. I hope you're the, yeah. I'm I'm problem. That's why I booked you on the merge uh, episode. Uh, it's gotta... all coming together! Come on. 40 chess, so Franny. Cool. 40, 40 ch- chess. Um, <laughs> I got played! The, uh, the cross-tribe alliance was kind of bounced around um, at, the, at, the, yeah. at the Island of Excessive Advantages. Nobody buys mm. that, right? Like that's I don't I know. Like it, uh, uh, well, go provide a counterpoint. You know I think, I think, I think first, I, think it's first I want to say sending those three guys on the journey was a little crazy. Surprised <laughs> that they let that happen. Honestly, because that's yeah. supposed to you're supposed to like pick who goes on the journey. I'm I'm assuming we missed something. Probably that was a longer conversation that we then we just saw because they were just like, oh, Q can go and Tim volunteered when it was like they're like, Nami, you get to choose. All three of them end up there. Oh. I don't know if that's the best call for literally everybody else except those three guys. For them, I think, is it an alliance? Probably not. Was it good for them to have a, some sort of baseline before they get to the merge? For sure. Because people are going to freak out a lot more if those three are talking on the beach at the merge versus here they are isolated on a journey they were forced to go on. I, I don't mm-hmm. know. I don't. Th- I think for Q, it probably was the best because mm. he doesn't have a lot of numbers. He's a big yeah. threat. He meets Hunter, gets some goodwill there. If this can get like someone like Q through the first votes or two, even if it's not the lines that takes him all the way, I think it, you know I think it's helpful. Do I think it's going to be the final six? No way. But but it's in, in, I don't know if Q did this on purpose, but he also got intel as to who Hunter's number one is and who Tim's number one is. I love that. That was my favorite part about it. Is I feel like it it forced them to give an answer, and like mm-hmm. both Tim and Hunter like had the opportunity, obviously, to lie or say something, but like that might come back to bite them later. And at least Q gets some information about that tribe. Whereas I feel like it, it's too easy if you don't ask a pointed question like that for the other people on the journey to just be like, "Yeah, we get along. Like, there's mm-hmm. not really cracks." You know, you forcing them to identify a number one. I think is a it's a good way to get some information. Yeah, I love the specificity of it too. Yeah, for that yeah. reason, which I didn't even really think of, which is like if that was Q doing that on purpose, like absolutely brilliant. But also it shows him that he they're like actually kind of serious. I feel like people yeah. make these like alliances early on in the merge or at these journeys and they're like, we're big people. We should stick together. Or like, we're going to keep it, like keep it out for each other. And then it's like a whole lot of nothing. Like there's no actual yeah. like plan or words behind it. He's kind of like showing them like, Hey, like I actually mean this. Like this is a specific thought, a specific strategic thought I've had. Mm-hmm. So I think it's nice to add that layer of specificity for maybe a little bit more confidence. We'll see. But yeah, I, I liked the approach. It's, it's unique to me. And I thought it was really cool. Though something I did just think of that's like a little concerning to me is um, you had a good point, Kelly, that like, you know, this is this like secret place where they can talk and they won't be interrupted. People aren't seeing what they're saying. But now that those three have been on the journey together, I feel like anytime they get together and talk now, once we get into like mergatory, people are going to be attuned to it in a different way and be like, did they True. all share an advantage? Did they have an alliance? Like, so I don't know. I could see That's that true. coming, coming back to bite them in some way. Yeah. And uh, Jim, uh, Jungle Jim, got the boot yeah, uh, with an idol in her pocket. Mm. Um, she worked so uh, hard to get it too. Added, yeah, added oh, that was, I was very impressed. I was very impressed because very impressed. Um, yeah, it seems like there's there's a lot of room for a margin of error with the the machete. So uh, kudos to her. Uh, I I I was on record saying I hated her planting the beware advantage just because yeah. if you know I would have followed every I would have made sure to follow everybody. Uh, keep an eye yeah. on to make sure they wouldn't be able to sneak away to get that idol if, if I was concerned. Uh, it didn't. It did not come back to bite her. I don't. I don't think that's why she was targeted. Uh, she believes she was targeted because the evening before, uh, she had shared her story with with her in alliance or with her tribe uh, about uh, her upbringing um, with with some uh, domestic abuse and, and things along those lines. Uh, so it, it was. She was. She was kind of worried that um, they thought she might have too strong of a story at a final tribal, and that kind of put a target on her back. Uh, but yeah, it was, uh, like I said, um, really 
hated that Beware Advantage move, but kudos to her for it, it didn't it didn't really come back to bite her. Um, I didn't like that she had ended up having to to lie to her number one uh, over that something is, is yeah really, like ended up having. You, to you lie. don't think it came back to bite her at all? I don't know. I I, I, I think it probably that. did. I, I think it did. I, I also I'm think sure like, a lot went into it, but. Yeah, I don't, the story thing is interesting. I hadn't heard that. Um, I feel like. Are you not watching my ex interviews, Franny? I'm. Oh, it's a busy week. I'm trying to get you. Yeah, I just. Okay. God, you. Exactly. You didn't I just gave a little this. ASMR moment there. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, should I do like her through the roof for some reason. That <laughs> happened. That, okay, so so I don't know if you watched Power Rankings last week, but I, I showed a clip of Jeff Probst saying I had a fat ass uh, in Nicaragua. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Um, I said. I, did, I, just, I saw that. <laughs> and like, I watched like the video. YouTube traffic, and there's like a spike, like like a, like legitimately the like people replay, some, like, replay, replay. people like click to watch that and then click out, like it made no sense how the oh traffic God. did that. Thanks, Jeff, by the way. Um, oh but, my God! Uh, but yeah, wow. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Anyway, back to back um, to back to Jen. Back to Jen. What what I was saying is like, I just I. I I can understand her thinking that. I hope that that wouldn't be. Oh my god, sorry, got, got like a sunbeam on me. Um, I hope that that wouldn't be a reason that her tribe mates would vote her out. But I, I'd kind of be surprised if they did because I feel like people like even if somebody has a really powerful story, I don't think that you're thinking about that in terms of yeah. how they're going to perform at final tribal for your first vote. Yeah, and absolutely. I genuinely, I genuinely think that people somebody on that tribe thought that she was the one who planted the beware advantage there's there's only six of them like yeah. her name 100%. had to have come up for that at some point and i found it weird that in the edit we never see her being considered for that so my conspiracy theory with matt is that we think that others on her tribe maybe did think she had done that uh but the edit just wasn't showing it to maybe make like besides tim because I think Tim suspected her. Tim, I don't know if well, he Tim suspected did suspect her. He tried to get it out of her. I bet that to... he. I bet Tim talked to you know Ben. Tim and had to send it to everyone. Yeah, and yeah, yeah everyone yeah, yeah. about it. Yeah, they just show that conversation because it's the most poignant and heated one. Yeah. It yeah. honestly, to me, it seemed like the two people who were catching the heat of that being possible was Jam or Tim. Yeah. So maybe yeah. they were like, "Oh, this is just reactionary." But I think that they, even if they didn't think Jam like did the planting thing i think the way she i think more what hurt her was sort of her like uh actions like right before tribal council yeah i yeah i feel like her i think she just kind of read uh tim and ben wrong in terms of how to approach them about the the vote and i think she it, like i got the sense that she just spooked both of them a lot like especially ben yeah. um yeah. And I respect her wanting to play in a way that's like assertive like that. But I think you got to read the room of the person that you're with. And I think Ben was never going to take that well. Yeah. Um, and and yeah. if, if, if Charlie and Maria had made the decision to stick with the guys, um, you know, it comes, then it comes down to Mariah or Jim and it seems like Jim was playing harder. So that it might've been something yeah. you know, exactly. as simple as that. I think that's, I think that's really like most simple way to sum it up is she just comes across like she's playing harder yeah. Yeah. even with even remove the beware advantage situation i still think mariah seems a little bit less threatening yeah. uh, moving into a merge mm -hmm. so or like uh, maybe like she'd be more likely to pull something sneaky or go off with somebody else than than mariah when you go to a merge yeah. and if you point oh, a machete at me and like who are you voting for like <laughs> yeah but i love you know what i like players being um like trying to do something new and unique with advantages i think that's like we want, I love survivor innovation. I think it's so cool, like bad example, but like, you know, no one looked for immunity. I was not a clue until Russell did it. So it's like, when you try to find something yeah. new and interesting, it's great. It's just like this beware advantage specifically didn't lend itself well to being replanted. Yes. Cause like, yeah. gonna find, she probably anticipated that they were going to lose before and not have three days of digging. Like that definitely was not, but it's, that's, a, that's the gamble you're taking when you're doing this kind of thing. Yeah, it's all yeah I think that this put like it could have turned out really, really well, and we could be like really impressed with this move right now, and like you know throwing our like flowers at her. I think it just like it it fell on the wrong side, unfortunately, yeah. this time. So, so true. Good. Uh, Jem was voted out. Uh, Julie and Owen both had her in spot eleven, so uh, our second tie of the season. Tie. So the current score wow. right now, I know Reba four uh, minus D plus Kelly fifty six. Uh, Gordon's wonderful all stars of heroic victory. Uh, 52 so only a four point differential uh with so many points left on the board i'm sure we'll catch up i'm sure we'll get those cupcakes uh hopping onto the message board to see how the viewers did last week 93 percent of the message board got it right 
uh, knowing that Banu was going home. Like a bunch, oh. of, like a bunch I of. I was like, whoa! I know. If, if it know? Been, we're so impressed. If it had been yeah. any other situation, I'd be like, oh no, spoilers leaked. What happened? Like no. But they yeah. all got Jim. How? Yeah, no, no. Yeah. I got Banu. Yeah, it's like, how did they know? Uh, but so nobody got it this week. Uh, nobody got it correct this week. Uh, we had someone very close to spot 13. Uh, we had a couple of people no shot one. in the dark. Uh, J.M. Wow. Chap, Joel M. Gallagher, Phoebe Little, and Kendra McCallahan. Uh, spot 12, we have Sloan Comets Things, Canado, Stephen M., JP15 is me, and Danny Uell. If you guys want to grab a snack, this is the perfect time to do it. Uh, tied with Julian Owen at spot 11, we have Rat Gravity, HMP Staff, Chris Hamelon, and C. Blazer C. At spot 10, uh, we've got Sydney Allen, Huffy991, uh, Cody Brahman, B. Lemon, Fat Ass the Great, Bra <laughs> Braden Aders, Anders. I told myself I was going to laugh. It's is that you? Is that you? <laughs> oh, yeah, according to Jeff Tobes, that's you. That's true. <laughs> and I was in good, I, I was in good shape oh, no. uh, in Survivor Nicaragua. Oh, no. uh, it's a compliment. <laughs> I know. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, Braden Anders, I hope that doesn't stick. Braden Anders, uh, Vincent M Maestas, and Nathan Bomber. Uh, nine, we've got Nikki 20, Okander. Uh, Charlie Schechter, Eric Swain, Sean Gawden, Andrew Guglia, Saxophonia, Brandon Davies, Nadia X01, Logan Smith, Kevin A, and J.K. Morgan. Spot eight, we've got Potato Dog. Potato Dog. Uh, Imperfect Star, Dylan W, <laughs> Yuki PT, 2LM, uh, Dot Motion, Baby Fox, do 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 Thank you for doing that heart, because I always do it wrong. Like, I, I can never, like, yeah. This? There we go. Yeah, I got it. I'm, I, I, I get oh. oh, look, you got, oh, you must have fancy Zoom. Uh, I don't know how to do that. I definitely don't. Uh, you do have, like, or maybe I have fancy. Is this recording? I'll watch Watch it doesn't show up on the recording, and I'm just like, do you not see the hearts? People are like, what's he saying? What's he talking about? Oh, we're just losing it. Um, this is so funny. I don't know. Okay, spot seven, Jenna Dam. Kitchen Table Polemicist. I think that's how you pronounce it. Karasu, AM Long 14, and Jag 519. Spot six, Kristen Dicker, Evan Swihart, Survivor Drip, Rowan 3123. Spot five, Ghetto Hamster, Mal Sparks. Uh, spot four. Cats rule the world um, Ooh, is not that's... the lowest spot is not the lowest spot because uh, we have a lone person in the worst spot of the week. So we're sending out cyber hugs. If you, uh, if you're willing to accept them uh, to ferret bandit who had gem in spot. three. See, I think that's so fair though. I, if I had done last week, I probably would have ranked her quite high because she had an idol, you yeah, know, like, yes. yes. Yeah. I, I wouldn't I, have thought I, she would have gone home. Yeah. yeah. So um, ferret oh. bandit. I don't know if you're a ferret who steals things or a person who steals ferrets. <laughs> what I do know is that better days are ahead for you, my friend. So hang Which is there. better? <laughs> I think a ferret who steals things, I'd prefer. I'd, be, I'd, um, watch, a, I'd watch a show of a ferret. Like I watch, a, I have a, a toddler, so I watch a lot <laughs> of animals that are superheroes or emergency yeah. workers. So I would absolutely watch a show with a ferret bandit in it. Ferret um, Bandit is on tonight at 8, 7 central. You're not watching right. it already. Not <laughs> um, the, the Ferret Bandit is like who the Paw Patrol hunts down. Uh, oh, that honestly yeah. sounds correct. Because he or she's yeah. doing all the stuff in Adventure Bay. So like, uh, that's probably what it is. Uh, I don't watch Patrol. adult TV. Outside of Survivor, I don't watch adult TV anymore. Um, Should we do Paw Patrol power rankings? Oh my God. <laughs> As a thought. I've never <laughs> seen Paw Patrol. But... Me neither. Only in like, the ER waiting room. That sky's number one. That pup's ready to fly. The rules for the Survivor Power Rankings are as follows. Each week, a member from each team will create separate Power Rankings. The ranking of the person who's voted out of the next episode will determine the number of points the players will earn. For example, if Tiffany is voted out of this episode and Kelly has her in fifth place and Franny has her in first place, Kelly's team will receive five points and Franny's team will receive one point. At the end of the season, the team with the most points will be named the Survivor 46 Power Rankings Challenge Champions. Uh, important side note, rankings are not based on who the player thinks is most likely to win. No, no. I'm so Never. slow. That was, that, was, that was the slow motion. That was the slow motion slingshot. Of me going, <laughs> no, oh, no, no. The smart strategy <laughs> is to rank players based on how safe you think they are in the up coming vote all right are we ready to go let's do that <laughs> i all hope right. so ellie lead us off at spot one i'm leading off all right well i know you said the number one is not supposed to be who you think is going to win the game but mine is both okay Ooh. and i've been i've been riding this person the whole time so proud of him charlie is my number one he's crushing it i'm yes. a huge charlie fan um, maybe just because he's playing in the middle. I'm a little biased towards myself. But I think he's played so great. But honestly, going into Mergatory, this is the hardest week, notoriously. 
basically all that's going to matter is who's on which side of the challenge, like, and how yeah. that split goes. So this is super hard. So I'm thinking about it, like people who are, you know, in a good spot on their tribe, but maybe not necessarily the biggest, most obvious threat or the most expendable player. I think Charlie fits both of those things. Um, he's not like an out in your face threat kind of in any way, but he's pretty good at everything. He's pretty good at challenges. He's pretty good socially. I think he's good strategically. Um, he's in the power seat. He has five members on his tribe. And I think he's pretty high up on that hierarchy. The only concern for him would be like Mariah is feeling burned. I don't know if she's, if she's got enough options to kind of like mount an anti-Charlie resistance. So I think Charlie is, is super safe, uh, even if he is vulnerable, to be honest. Wow. Not in my wildest dreams did I think you would have him first. I mean, if karma comes back and he gets voted out, you're just gonna have to shake it off. Wow, that was oh my God. <laughs> uh, okay, let me think out. about Sorry, Damn. Franny. I don't know Taylor Swift enough. Crap. I'm, I'm uh, like well, really thinking about Taylor. Look what you made me yeah. do, Gordon. Put Charlie mm -hmm. on number one. Don't blame uh, me if he goes home, Julie. There you go. There you go. <laughs> In my spot one, I have Tiffany. Um, so I, obviously, like you said, Kelly, this episode sucks for ranking. Like, it's just really hard. It is entirely dependent on who is, you know, safe in the mergatory and who is not. Thanks, mm -hmm. Gordon, for putting me in. Really appreciate it. Um, so the group that I'm, that I was really struggling to understand is, is Yanu. Like, I think it could go one of two ways. Either they will be like discounted because there's only three of them. Um, they're so down and out. They haven't eaten anything. I think people could totally like forget about them and let them slide. Or there could be this huge spotlight on them because Banu on the journey went and told everyone, you know, Kenzie's a mastermind and then Hugh and Tiff are a duo. So I, I just feel like I don't know how that split will go. But of the three people on Yanu, I think that Tiffany is the safest and she has an idol. And I really trust that she is savvy enough to know if she needs to play it. And if she ends up with a mergatory group, she's the only Yanu there. I think she's just going to play it and blow it and deal with it. Mm. So I feel confident with her in spot one. Um, in spot two, potentially interesting pick. I have Liz. who <gasps> I have Liz, like, my too. <laughs> <laughs> She's amazing. <laughs> Liz is great. I'm like, who's Liz hurting right now? Who's Liz bothering? Nobody. Um, you know, I think she she had those kind of whiffs at the beginning when she was kind of talking about making a lot of money and stuff. But I think that's long past. Um, it seems like somebody like Tevin and Hunter are trying to pull her in uh, to make other moves. And I think she made some connections with Ben during that journey. He might want to reconnect with her. Um, mm. Yeah. I just don't see any world in which she's considered a threat. So I have her uh, really high as well at this point. Yeah, and at this, this point, like, she makes a lot of money is the worst reason to get rid of somebody. Uh, yeah, I heard point. of that. Yeah. Like, like, maybe, maybe early, like, that's, you know, why is she even here? But, like, and now it's like, great, let's go. Let's go to the end. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And kind of like this Nami tribe is a lot of big personalities all going at each other's throats. And she's somehow not in there. Although, the preview, did you watch the preview? It I did that, say yeah. Hunter was like, Liz and Sona can't stand each other. It's a disaster. Mm -hmm. I was really feeling for Hunter at that moment. I've been there, buddy. You know, it's hard. it's hard. It's hard. All right. So I'm on to my two now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. Number two. Ooh, I'm a little nervous about this one now. I have Tevin. Okay. <gasps> Whoa. Crazy. I smell disparity. Listen, okay. I, I really like Tevin. I don't, I think he's going to eventually become a target, like a social target, blah, blah, blah. But for right now, and for how, what I was kind of just discussing with Charlie, like, who's in charge of their tribe isn't the biggest threat and isn't the sacrificial lamb. I think Tevin fits that, mm. you know, he's, he's never going to be the name that the rest of his tribe mates are like, I'm willing to lose Tevin. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think him and Hunter are kind of in control. Maybe Soda says that, but honestly, I do think that would go reverse against Soda in that case, because she's got other people too. So I was like, and he has an extra vote, which could become a big thing in a situation like this or a split if he knows when to use it. Plus, it make, make people more nervous to target him because I think everybody knows about it. So also, he's just social and I think he's going to integrate well. There was like this press photo. Maybe this is why I did it. Press photo of him and Charlie like, like hugging. And I was like, oh, yeah, I I feel like those two could work. And I feel like I was thinking about You're like, Tevin. I should put them as my top two. <laughs> <laughs> They just like wormed their way in there. All right, well, CBS got me then. But, you know, I don't know. I just feel like Tevin's in a good spot in his tribe and they're like this like five, five, three split. 
I think the bottoms of those fives are most at risk. And I just don't think he's in there right now. Now, before we move on, a question to the audience. Um, if we ever got into merchandising, uh, would you buy a Franny Marin, I smell a disparity shirt? <laughs> I, I think I've actually, I've said that a couple of times. So it is, it's like a, it's a catchphrase of mine now. Yeah, I, 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 I love pick it. One, I pick one up. I love yeah. catchphrases. What the hell, guys? What the hell, guys? <laughs> what the, exactly. Put it on your shop. Right. I should have had my shirt on today. Sorry. That's three to you, Kelly. All right. Three to me. All right. In spot three, I have Maria. Um, again, I, I'm pretty high on the Seeger tribe and I'm pretty high on Charlie Maria. I just don't feel like Maria is someone that people are going to be like, she has got to go with the merge or, and I don't think anyone's going to throw her under the bus. Like Mariah, that's like her only person she was like maybe okay with like I don't even know who Mariah is going to feel good about but I kind of feel like maybe it would be Maria of anybody she's also in that dude's alliance that was formed at the journey her name was the bonus name wasn't it mm -hmm. yeah what I was surprised about because I thought Tim was going to say Ben but he said Maria so, I was surprised by that too. put on Maria yeah. I think Maria's got maybe a little bit more social game cooking than we are totally seeing because the whole story is kind of like the middle with Charlie but I'm seeing it as like Charlie's other side option is Ben and Maria's other side option is Tim. So I think that's great. So I just doubt she gets brought up as either the big threat or the sacrifice. And I think she did make the right call for herself this week, even though it's like sucks to lose Jam. I think the when you're going into these situations, and I'm kind of thinking about the Reba for a little bit here, like who's the tightest like four group coming into the merge is probably the Seagulls that just voted together. And maybe there was the Anu three, but they have a little bit more sway. So I, I don't know. I think she's in a good spot. And maybe if those four can be cohesive, they can be a, a pretty big block. And I think Maria will be an important part of that. So I think I think she's killing it. All right. This is going to sound uh, maybe a little broken record then for a second, uh, because in my spot three, I have Charlie. Um, yeah, I agree. I think he's doing a wonderful job. I love this little Charlie Maria alliance that's happening. Um, also love the potential of the Charlie Ben alliance. Big fan of them. Oh, um, yeah. So oh, so cute. The whole Sega tribe. I'm just, I, I really, they're very dear uh, to my heart. But yeah, I think Charlie is playing the middle wonderfully. Uh, I think that, oh, I'll I did that right? just for you. There you I go. really hope they show up in the recording or they're going to be yeah. like, <laughs> I think so. You're going to be like, was I crazy? Um, but yeah, I think Charlie's in an excellent spot and everything you said, Kelly, like he is a super well-rounded player and is not um, sticking out too much in any one dimension where people might want to like lob his head off. So I think he's in a perfect spot going into next week. Uh, in spot four, I have Maria. Kind of for the same reasons as Charlie. Um, I also just want to say like, uh, it seems to be pretty public that she had that extra vote. Like we see Tim mention it to Q and Hunter at the journey. Um, surely that got back to the rest of the tribes. I think it's great that she just played it. And there's all these other people who can corroborate. Yep, Maria just played that. Because that was like the one thing that I could see uh, people getting concerned about or just any sort of fodder for, for people mm -hmm, to target mm -hmm. her. Yeah. But given that she's blown it, I think her threat level just like really decreased and she can sky right through I think, this week. I think she tweeted that she did that on per that was that was why she did it to get rid of the advantage before going into the merge when everyone knew about it which i thought was was very smart yeah that's yeah and i think extra votes are also like i, I feel like it, they've so rarely been helpful so yeah. and honestly just put a target on you so i think it's a great it's i think great the only choice. place it would matter would be the when they do the tribe split that it yeah. could be a big move but otherwise like mm, it's hard. How much is one vote? I mean, you never know. We just say this and then one time it's going to be crazy and everyone's and we'll be eating our words. Yeah. All right. Am I to four now? Four to you. Four. All right. I got Liz. I thought I was being like innovative putting Liz high, but I guess not. <laughs> no one is looking at her. She's not a threat. You know, she's not a problem for NAMI. That's now been totally shifted off of her kind of without doing anything. And Tevin and Hunter definitely view her as a number there's no way either of them are going to want to get rid of her she's not going to be thrown out there and I don't even think I think there's going to be a pretty high risk for like Venus to go around and like start throwing information out about the NAMI tribe I don't think she's going to be talking about Liz so I think from all angles she's covered and uh I, I it's it's great for her she's cracking me up every episode too her like lack of idol searching was so funny she's like eh, I don't need it I mean you know what she doesn't <laughs> My so. joke was, I, I imagine back home, she hires people to look for immunity idols for her. So like, you know, with that kind of money. 
yeah. yeah. She's like, I don't have time for this. I'm I'm upper management. Yeah, I can't I can't go looking for oh, idols. Yeah. I delegate my idol searching. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Spot five. Broken record. Great minds think alike. Tiffany. Woohoo. I I love Tiffany, another one of my favorite, favorite players. Um, I wonder if she can keep her threat level low enough long term or else that's my only concern for her in terms of like her pick potential but I think she's great she's very savvy she's got the idol she has this she's also in the middle of the Yanu tribe who I actually have pretty high hopes for moving forward um I think this Mm -hmm. when you're like that three I mean I think about season 44 this is sort of like a different version of the teak of three different like flavor I would say but I think coming in in that spot is is great. And three is kind of the sweet spot to where you're not so isolated that it's only two of you, that you mm-hmm. actually have a group that you can like really shift numbers with. So I think that they're going to be, as long as Kenzie kind of keeps it low key, I think those three are in like an amazing spot. I doubt they'll get targeted. And of all of them, Tiffany's in the best spot. She's got the strong relationship with Q. She's got the strong relationship with Kenzie. So she can go either way, depending on like, if there is some like big wave against Kenzie or some big wave against Q, for whatever reason, she'll be fine either way. Like she's covered her bases. So I think that's great. And uh, if she needs to throw Kenzie under the bus, I think she would. Like she doesn't, she's like a ruthless enough player and Q is the obvious big dude threat. So uh, she's killing it. Yes. We're right. We're we're right up in here. This is okay. Maybe after this is where we'll start to like, this is where it gets a little directions. tricky. Maybe this is where it gets a little tricky. Maybe then we'll smell some disparity. No, am I picking something up? Wafting. Um, okay, <laughs> my spot five. I have Ben, and I have Ben in this spot because uh we saw a couple of different players this past week identify that Ben is wonderful socially. Like he just seems like a real social butterfly, draws people in, super fun and funny. Um, but so my first thought when I hear somebody describe a player that way is like thinking about somebody like Caleb, who who was so social, but also talking to everybody and who was quickly at the merge identified as, as a threat. And then, you know, was what people tried to vote him out. I feel like Ben does not have that same trajectory because I don't think that he's approaching people as strategically as like a Caleb was. And so I think he'll be really fun and friendly and people will like him, but he won't stand out as somebody who's trying to like get numbers right away or like kind of glad hand people um and i think charlie is gonna fight for him tim is gonna fight for him i think he's got you know a good enough people in his corner uh to survive in spot six i have q um q was really difficult to place because he said himself he might be in trouble going into a merge he's a bigger guy um he's in a known duo with tiffany uh and you know Maybe those are the two reasons why. Yes, he's likable. But um, but I also think like something could be said for this random alliance of six that he just tried to form. At the very least, I think that if his name comes up, there's a chance that Tam and Hunter let him know so that he can do something about it. Um, but ultimately, I do kind of think that the yeah, I almost I almost just said the Tika three, that the Yanu three will be able to like <laughs> sky through and be okay, at least for this very first mergatory vote. I totally agree with that. Mm-hmm. I guess I can just segue right on into my number six, which is yeah. Q. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, see, here we go. Darn it. I swear to God, it's all in my notes. This is not, no changes on the fly. Um, I really like Q and yeah, a lot of the same reasons you were just talking about. I do find him difficult to place, but part of the reason I put him in six was the mergatory challenge is a huge deal. And mm-hmm. I kind of think, I feel like you probably, he's more likely to be on the winning side, right? If it's Hunter versus Q, that'll be interesting. But if, if they end up on the same one, I just think Q's in that like pocket of maybe he's got a slight percentage edge to be safe in that way. And if he's safe there, I think like he's off to the races. Like he's probably in like an excellent spot moving forward because he's going to be able to throw around all this influence he has. And it's a lot easier to do it when you're safe and you're at this merge feast and there's sort of like, well, I've never been to one, so I don't know. But, um, you know, I feel like you can kind of talk a little bit more freely there because everyone's just like looking for a name. It's great. You should try it. It's great. I think Q would throw a name. Like, you know, know I mean, he's, I think he doesn't care. Like, like kind of like Gabler did maybe. And then just take charge. Like he seems like a take charge kind of guy. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think Hunter and Tim will probably want him to stay. He's clearly got, a brain for strategy so i feel really good about um the yanu three moving forward also so i'm kind of putting my eggs in that basket a little bit besides kenzie sorry girl okay spot <laughs> seven i'm like this is like getting boring i have been 
No, uh, oh all right, God, listen, come listen. On. <laughs> Ben is vibes. I am, I'm a huge fan of Ben. And I do think the whole like social threat situation of identified by Jem and Charlie, like maybe a problem down the line, but exactly like you said, he's not viewed as like a huge strategic threat. Maybe people are probably underestimating him there, but this is like the time of the game where I think a player like Ben thrives the most actually like a merge situation yeah. because exactly of what you were saying. Um, and he's now they've Charlie and uh, Maria have like stuck their neck out for him. So he's got like a pretty, I think he'll really have that trust with them and they will have it back. And so no one's going to want him to go. And I think he'll be socially aware enough to integrate in a way that won't make him not threatening. So I, I'm a, I like, I really like that. I think he's playing a, a, a great, great game despite he got targeted by Jeff. Other than that. Um, yeah. Am I done? Yes. You're done. Uh, <laughs> you know, and I know you, you you both don't watch Gordon Holmes' exit press, although you should. Uh, Jeff yeah. said well, I that, didn't even have one, so in my defense. Uh, I, I was sick. Um, like, uh, Jem made the point that, like, Ben is a wonderful, interesting, fascinating guy, but was kind of lazy around camp. Apparently, after after challenges, he'd, like, relax on the he, beach and be like, bring me food, bring me water. So he does have the potential uh, as much as he rocks to rub people the wrong way. So, oh, uh, well, I didn't see that one coming. So, if so, me and Franny will both be screwed. Yeah. Oh, no. Watch not the good press. vibes guy. Watch that does not press. rock. That does yeah. not that rock. Does not rock. <laughs> not rock. Um, all right. In my spot seven, uh, you know, rounding out our top seven that are all the same but shuffled i have tevin um and i have him a lot lower than you i'm not sure if this will be our biggest disparity but it could be probably will um, probably will the reason i have tevin so much lower i think than than you placed him is um obviously it became very public that maria had an extra vote i think with that it has to also be public that tevin has an extra vote and unlike maria tevin hasn't had the opportunity to like offload it in a way that you know isn't going to hurt him so i think a small thing like that genuinely can be enough of a reason to put a target on somebody. I think it's dumb, but it happens. Um, and as we talked about, is there a potential rift forming within Nami with, you know, Soda on one side, Tevin on the other side? I could see that coming back to bite him. But uh, I think he's the highest person on Nami besides Liz. So I'm really not that concerned about him. Uh, right after Tevin, I've got his little uh, Andy Griffith alliance partner in Hunter. Um, Hunter... I struggled with. I actually had him much lower in my like initial ranking, and then I bumped him up higher. Um, I think Hunter has been getting so much visibility in the challenges, and that is bad for him. Um, people see that he's like a golden boy. He's doing really well and uh, will want to vote him out before he has the opportunity to do an immunity run. But I think that there are a lot of people who have Hunter's back, and in what is potentially like a you know split mergatory situation, I think. No matter who he's shuffled with, there will be somebody who has his back, will let him know if his name comes up, will try to get it on somebody else. I think that Q and Tim will like genuinely want to work with him. Tevin's going to go to the end of the earth to protect Hunter. And then I think somebody even like Liz, you know, wants to continue working with him. I, I just feel like he's got a lot of people in his corner and will probably have an opportunity to get that idol, we hope, we think. Yes. I, I tell you, I, I kind of hated how Hunter treated Venus. Um, I, I don't, really? I don't, think, I don't think you need to align with everybody, but like, it, it just seemed like he was blowing her off. Uh, mm. Where it seemed like he could, like, it, it seems like it throw her a little bit of a, a a lifeline or whatever, just like, like give her some hope or whatever you have to do to not make mm. her an enemy. Uh, and it, it felt like he wasn't doing that. It seemed like it seemed, it seemed like he was annoyed by her, and so that was kind of like the first like downside to Hunter, uh, aside from not knowing Survivor uh, logos that I felt like. Was I think he's done such a good job actually like doing the opposite of that for most of the time that he's been on there where like the rest of his tribe mates have been a little bit more, like I mean, he like rolled his eyes because he was annoyed with Soda singing, but he did it to himself. Yeah. I was like, this is what you, these are the kind of things I need to see people do for me to like believe in them. And so Hunter, like I think one of the reasons all those, and also he's my next spot. So we can just, we can just roll right in. He's in. <laughs> I also I also was so concerned about Hunter but then I was thinking about the idol and I think he definitely will find it like he's got he's uh, like he's obviously gonna be able to solve whatever clue blah 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 I wonder if he's gonna tell his tribe mates or not because no one knows as far as oh wow oh. and if he does Kelly's not happy about it. <laughs> I, guess I hope he keeps it a secret because and then if he gets one of these heads up he can play it for himself and his other tribe mates yeah. are gonna be like worried about it like ricocheting on him um 
Uh, but I also think he's like, if anyone can carry a team to a mergatory challenge win, it's Hunter. So that bumped me up, bumped him up for me. Um, and also he's going to have no vote, I believe, because he lost it at the journey. And this is a really interesting okay. part of the game to not have a vote. I talked about this a little bit before, but um, both Jesse and Omer went into their merge with no vote. And so did Matt, actually. And now, so interesting. Some people have said, and I kind of like this idea, I think it's got to be a little circumstantial, where that can help you not show your cards, especially if you're safe. And that can be like a really powerful way to get information where people are a little less concerned telling you something because you're not going to be able to vote. And you can kind of go around and just be like, oh, you know, I have no say, but I just want to hear what's, you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? So I think that's kind of interesting for Hunter because I think he's the most agreeable member of the Nami tribe and probably is the best chance of integrating with people, even though he's a big dude, which is, is really an interesting and good spot for him to be in. I think can relate to him in only one way. I am not a challenge beast, but I feel like he's the glue of his tribe. Um, and I think that's a good spot to be right now. I think eventually like that on top of the fact that he's a big challenge, right? It's going to be like a massive problem for him. But in this situation, that's good because people are really panicky and nervous and like, there's a lot of fear at the mergatory, especially if you're not safe. And if you're not fear about your ally going home, it's like the most perilous part of the game. So someone like that who brings that energy is in a good spot. Um, okay, my next one, number nine. Yeah. Him. Getting a little nervous here on my bottom rankings. So Tim came out on top last week against his like the Tim versus Jem war. But I was a little concerned by how that conversation between between Tim and Jem went. Like one of the things I noticed actually was when they're having kind of that confrontation. At one point, Tim's back is literally like to Jem. I was like, you're not even making eye contact. So I, I just feel like there's a little bit of lack of finesse in these kind of conversations even though he had like a great read the way he approached her it didn't give me a lot of confidence it made me a little nervous about his game moving forward but I put him above uh Mariah and some of the other players on the other tribes because I think you know he's in this Sega 4 situation right now he has a good base to go on so I would be still like kind of surprised if he was the mergatory boot I just think that maybe at some point it could blow up a little bit and I do think he was overestimating his relationship with Maria a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. I think he really thought him and Maria were were number ones to each other, and that's clearly not the case that we know. Um, so I, you know, I could see Maria. She seems like a ruthless player, like do what she's got to do kind of person. So she could maybe be more all right throwing Tim under the bus than he would think in the future. But right now, mm -hmm. I'm a little nervous, but I think he'll be all right. This is. Uh, did we coordinate this? Because oh, in my no. spot nine, I've got Tim. I think we have similar brains for this kind See, of stuff, which I love. This is not what we want, though. We want big disparities so that my team can pull ahead. This is, the, <laughs> you know. But it's I wanna, too late I now. I want to smell so, some disparities, and I don't smell any. Yeah, not smelling much. Um, yeah, I'm Tim in spot nine for all the reasons you said. And then also the other, like, small point of concern I had for him is, um, as far as we know, members of the Sega tribe might still think that Tim is the one who replanted the beware advantage. Mm. And if that kernel of information gets spread around at mergatory as tends to happen, I could see that being a reason to target Tim. Um, again, yeah, I have him ranked uh, higher than, uh, you know, somebody else on his tribe, but I don't think he's in a wonderful position in terms of like, who's going to fight for him. Uh, and yeah. if he's on the losing group. Um, in spot 10, right under him, I have Mo. Um, I feel bad for her. You know, she just clearly was really left out of that vote, but out of anyone, I think that she will be able to integrate pretty well back into the Sega tribe. I think she's really sweet. I love that scene, uh, with Mo and Charlie, where she really th takes a moment to say, you know, I'm sorry. I know this is hard for you. The thought of voting out Ben, like, you know, as a friend, um, I think that kind of attitude will like really endear herself to a lot of people mm -hmm. um but what concerns me with mo is like if she is on the losing group especially if she's separated from some of her Sika people she feels like such an easy pick like she was just left out of the boat which i'm sure is going to get around uh and again who's fighting for her like that's just always the question i ask myself with these mergatory votes because you're separated and yeah. if nobody's there to get your name off the chopping block then you're screwed and so i just good. can't think of of who that would be for her. Um, 
Yeah. Spot Very time. good point, Franny. Because I'm, I mean, I was so nervous in my mortuary because I was vulnerable. Because I was like, oh, I knew I had this amulet. I was like really nervous. And people went to bat for me. And that's why I was okay. Mm -hmm. And I was so surprised that Jay Maya was even brought up. But because she was kind of not fully in that Reba alliance, she kind of just got thrown in there. She might not even done anything like super wrong. But that's it. Nobody's a, fighting for her. No one's yeah, fighting yeah. for her. Such a good point for any. Oh, excellent. Love this. It's like survivor school yeah. sometimes on this show. I, I, I love it. I feel that way. I love it. Oh, oh, Franny oh, lessons. Thanks, guys. I love it. I'm gonna have to, if <laughs> those hearts. Heart, heart, I'm gonna have to put, put hearts heart for good measure. If those don't okay. go up. Oh, okay. We got a little disparity here, and I just I think I got a little crazy with this one. Um, spot oh. ten. I have Venus. I oh. believe in Venus. Okay, I love a scrappy girl. Um, she's had a few blunders, not, not, you know, but this is the time where she, I think she's going to like explode, um, which could be bad, but I think there's these players like Q and Tiffany and maybe even like Tevin and Hunter who are opportunistic and Venus is probably going to give them information. And she wants out of that NAMI tribe, like super bad. I think she's going to turn on them immediately. I don't think that's rocket science. And so that could be a reason to target her. Like, I think her name might be thrown out potentially by NAMI people who are on the right side of the mergatory or even just in general. But I, I don't know if, if like they, other people are going to want to get rid of her if they see her as a source of information. The only thing would be if she's too chaotic and she goes a little too much that she could make herself into a target and it's just easy, which is why I have her on the <clears throat> bottom half. But I'm wondering now, like I, I she was so on the bottom forever. And I, I kind of think Soda may have, dropped below her on the nami tribe hierarchy it seemed like soda was going to go home in theory if they went to tribal not this week because i didn't really talk about it but the week before so i did put, end up putting soda below venus so i'm really i'm very excited i think venus is going to be a big character of this merge so uh here's my roll the dice moment uh i'm all in on venus <laughs> <laughs> all in at spot like 10 <laughs> If you're all in, I'd be like, spot is, one, I mean, coward. These Dude. people are like, you know, this is the nervous, this is the part that's so hard to rank that I was like, Whoa. yeah. I like Julie's <laughs> like, screw it. Alianu on the top. And then yeah. it's like, I, I really know Julie went person. all in. Oh, that's all right. I got to get more inspired by Julie here. Okay, next one. Uh, 11, I have Kenzie. Um, Really, I, I, again, I believe in the Yanu three, but if anyone's going to go, it's a definitely going to be Kenzie um, from that group. So simply because if for some reason they're just like, oh, let's just get out of Yanu, it's easier. We have the majority tribes. She will be the sacrifice, the sacrificial lamb. She's that, that expendable person on their tribe, uh, for lack of a better term. Sorry, Kenzie. But I think she's actually also a pretty, like her social game so interesting right because sometimes I see these spurts of things that are so good and she's obviously very good at like reading people's emotions and picking up on what they're feeling like she picked up on cue you know kind of being out of it really quickly but then she kind of moves into the the Caleb territory of just a little bit too much so I wonder if coach Q will come out and, and coach Kenzie to tone it down a little bit and uh, I think their success moving forward as a group is going to really hinge on her uh, behavior right now but I am, I am worried that she's one of those people that, you know, she got called a mastermind and I think Q and Tiff would throw her under the bus if needed. So she, she could be in a, in a bad spot if like a split goes a certain way, especially if all the Yadus are together or something and none of them are fighting for her. And there's a little bit of rumors around. That's why I have Kenzie this low. Oh, that's, I, yeah. Spot 11, I have Kenzie. <laughs> there's only a few left. You know? <laughs> I know there's only a couple left. What are we going to do? Um, yeah, I've spent, I have uh, Kenzie in this spot as well. Um, I think that she's definitely in the worst position of anyone on Yanu. I think it's horrible that Banu uh, said that she's a mastermind, horrible for her game. I think that's the perception that people are going to have about her going in. And like you alluded to Kelly, like, I think she can be a little bit like Caleb sometimes and that she, you know, she goes around, she's like, she wants to be friends with everybody. She's asking what people are talking about. And I think that if people have a in their mind already she's a mastermind that will be read the wrong way um I also have this like vision I'm envisioning this could be prescient um if Q is on the winning mergatory group I can see him merge feast shoveling back food 
offering up Kenzie as a sex mm-hmm. line. <laughs> like, I feel like I can see it because I think, you know, Q would want to, um, you know, put himself ahead. I think there's no chance coach Q comes out for Kenzie. I think, I think if anything, Q wants Kenzie gone because then it appears to weaken Yanu and, uh, I don't know. Q has no love loss for Kenzie. So yeah. um, I think she's in a tough, a tough spot this week. Um, in spot 12, I have Venus as well. Um, yeah, I think Venus is another interesting player. I think that it's, I like what you were saying, Kelly, about her giving people information and that making her valuable, but she's just one, she's solo. Who mm-hmm. does she bring with her in terms of votes? And I think if she goes to a group and is giving them information, like, that's great. But I could see a group of people turning around and using that information against her and being like, sure. well, clearly she's on the bottom. Mm-hmm. She's also going around and stirring things up. Let's all have a consensus vote and get out somebody who we can yeah. all agree on. Um, I just, I I could really see her in that kind of like consensus spot um, at the mergatory. Yeah. And that's the time when consensus spots happen the most for sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All righty, moving down to my bottom two. Uh, 12, I have Mariah. Uh, I like, you know, I really like Mo and I, I'm kind of surprised I put her this low. Um, really, the first thing is she's just on the bottom of her tribe. She's left out of the boat. And I think this, you know, being viewed as expendable is really, really dangerous in this um, scenario right now. So I, you know, it would be kind of a random choice for the entire group to make. So, but I think if like there's a, a certain group of six who's not safe and she's in it, I am, I'm worried about no one fighting for her. And there's something, I hope I'm proved wrong, but I kind of feel like she doesn't have this like killer instinct where she would go out there and like raise hell if she heard that her name was going out. You know what I mean? And I, sometimes you you got to have that and be willing to like really throw people under the bus or lie or make something up. Like she could, maybe she'll surprise me, but she could use and be like, Tim's the one who did this and like spread this thing. And, and that would be a great move. But I'm not sure if I see her doing that. Um, so that's where why I kind of dropped her a little bit lower. I think there's a scenario where if Seek is really strong and they come in vibe tribe that's great but even the vibe tribe like Sega, it's hard with these groups that have barely gone to tribal council this just the dissension is it's always like ruminating against the surface and it's going to be every man for themselves at the merch feast i am sensing another lock uh between another you lock. two in the last spot so yeah Kelly, let's hear it it's coming let's hear it great minds right, oh. i have soda um yeah i think she's just really the most likely of anyone in the entire game to like catch strays from her tribe people who are going to like be able to have like things they're going to pinpoint to that are going to make people nervous like they're accusing her of basically being Caleb Bonami like oh she's making inroads with everybody Hunter made a comment that she was blatantly looking for idols that's not a good thing to have thrown on you I don't know if any other tribes have noticed the idol stealing scenario she talked a lot of trash on the mat and she just might be someone like she's a big personality and like some people are going to gravitate towards her and some people are not and that could be an issue for her in a situation like this where if you're standing out too much and not in a good way at the mergatory that's that's a problem yeah yeah, spot 13, I have soda as well. <laughs> um, I just genuinely like think, you know, it's what we've been saying this whole time, like, you know, who who has people fighting for them? Um, actually, I really like Soda. I think she's been like really, really fun on the show. So um, but I can't I can't think of a single person who's gonna fight for her if her name comes up. And I can think of a lot of people who will like fuel the fire if her name comes up. But Gordon, mm-hmm. you're having a you, uh, have a you counter? Venus. Venus didn't get along with Hunter, didn't get along with uh Tevin. I don't know how how Venus and Liz get along, but like Soda and and, and Venus have had conversations. So it is possible, you know, if maybe. if Venus doesn't go full free agent and she's looking for someone to partner with, maybe the Venus Soda thing happens. Yeah, that that is the one person that I can see. And I I think there was a scene like early on that talked about how Soda and Venus like uh, one of them said something to the degree of like we have a lot of respect or like personal love for each other, even though we're not on the same side. So I think that mm-hmm. like the foundation is there. But I also think that venus is really realistic about the game and her position and i think she might realize that it's not worth putting her foot down um yeah even though you know she might have a potential alliance i think if soda's name comes up venus is gonna be like well i need to find new friends you know what i mean um 
Yeah, but I hope it's not Soda. I, I quite like her. So yeah, I think see. she's such a fun character. I, but I like that angle. It would be really, I would be super impressed if Venus and Soda could would do something like that. Like that's what I was rooting for when I saw like, because there was like a little bit of that. Like Soda was still trying to have a bit of a connection with Venus when everyone else was kind of blowing her off, which I oh, thought was really good. Like I almost wanted her to do more because I thought there was like, there's an opportunity. This is someone who needs a lifeline, kind of like a, like Emily or like mm -hmm. one of my favorite survivor conversations of all time, which ends up not mattering is in Cambodia when Terry reaches out to Abby Maria in, in like that personal way. And I, I, it was, I just thought it was so brilliant and it was a, it was a personal move, but, and it was so genuine, but it was great for a game but because it was so genuine that bond would have been so solid moving forward. I, I'm just postulating because we didn't get to see it play out because Terry had to leave. But I just love that. And I think there's maybe there's potential for Soda to do something like that with Venus. And it could go a really long way, someone who's been feeling the heat like that. I don't know. The Nami tribe is so hard to predict how things are going to go. And then especially at the Mergatory, it's like, I, I was going to say, I didn't expect both of us to have Soda at the bottom, to be honest. Yeah, all all that we can predict about the Nami tribe is that they are gonna explode on impact. Like I have no doubt in my mind that they're just gonna go like no matter what the breakdown is, no matter what, they're gonna But it's gonna be good TV. It's gonna I'm very excited for this episode. I think it's we got a lot of fun yeah. characters to, to watch. I'm hyped about it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, this is unprecedented. Like literally, they had the exact same lineup. So why even bother? Um What's six the point? Six slots of the week. Uh, we have Q and six, Hunter and eight, Tim and nine, Kenzie and 11, Soda and 13. Is that all of them? Yeah. Okay. So five of the possible 13. Uh, so uh, there's a disparity, a, 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 a smelly disparity uh, that you can, because you smell the disparity. Um, yeah. Tevin, uh, Kelly had him in spot two, Fran had him in spot seven. So if Tevin goes home, Cupcake City. Good. Uh, for my team so i love three before is gonna vote me out again I'm, I'm a theater guy <laughs> i love my theater kids so fingers crossed for him but like mm -hmm. i also like cupcakes uh so yeah picks are locked in cannot be changed uh, enter your picks in the comments section below if you want to play along uh, feel free to keep score uh of course the honor system is what we go by here we trust each other uh kelly uh let us know uh you have a merchandise store where we can get our what the hell guys oh yeah um, what the hell guys is still you know in case you haven't forgotten about it yet no pressure. You can still get them at kellynelbandian.com. All right. I think it's, it's like a little subtle nod to Survivor. You don't have right. to wear this. You have to advertise right. the logos and help people study for the future season. You can just wear what the hell, guys. That challenge is going to be so easy when it's just those numbered logos. Um, and coming <laughs> soon to kellynelbandian.com is the uh, I Smell a Disparity shirt. Uh, yes. It's going to be yeah. a top seller. Mm -hmm. uh, All Franny, proceeds don't, go to Franny. Franny, don't you have a hilarious yeah. podcast? Oh, wow. Great segue. Thanks, Gordon. Right? I do have a hilarious podcast. Um, yeah, this is the Surviving the Dice D&D &D podcast that I have with some other people from my season. Um, yeah, we play D&D. &D. It's super, super fun. Um, if you've never heard D&D &D before, never played it, it's a fun intro. And if you know about D&D, &D, then uh, you can hear that we're noobs, but we're having a wonderful time. We love it. Um, yeah. A lot of fun guests coming on that as well. So Ooh. keep an eye out. Like I'm not a D and D person, um, and I obviously know you from from Survivor, but I still enjoy it. Like I still have a blast um, li listening to it, just because you guys are so hilarious. Uh, so e even though you don't talk about Survivor, uh, I think it's it's a real fun time and definitely worth people's times. Um, also, uh, if you have stuck around this long, uh, bless your heart. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? If you're watching this for so long, uh, but if you have, you know, hit the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel, uh, gently nudge that notification bell. Thing. Uh, I know if yeah. and if those hearts don't show up, I got to put them in a post. Uh, Franny <laughs> Kelly, you're both rock stars. Uh, you're not going to know this when it's edited together. My my daughter got sick during this, so there was a long period where these two had to sit here and wait for me to come back. So I, I appreciate you wasting a Friday night doing this with me. And I, I I always it's such a blast. I learned so much. I thank you so much. You're both rock stars. Oh, Gordon. Oh no, this is the best. Thank you for having us. Gordon. We had a little <laughs> side chat. It was great. The the only down the, like the only negative about you two is you make questionable choices about how to spend your free time. That's it. Like other than that, you're you're both yeah. awesome. So That's thank true. you so much. Right I'm right working now. the whole weekend. I you know this is the most fun thing I'm going to do the whole weekend. So there you go. Uh, a little so large. there you go. So until until next time, for Kelly, for Franny, for myself, uh, thank you for joining us here at the Survivor Power Rankings, and we hope to see you next week. Woo!